I said champions go head to head, and I meant it because our next matchup is Kilson versus Cooler here for our latest week of Quake Pro League and Flea. I mean, do I even need to explain these two players? I mean, they are most definitely champions, even in the literal sense. Both of these players have gone to hoist the belt over their head once before. Cooler has won a stage final, Kilson has won two. So these are absolute legends, veterans of the scene, who have played each other more often than I could count. But last time they played against one another, it was Kilson who took away the victory in a 2-1 fashion. But let's see if that remains the case today as well. Now, Kilson so far has had a pretty good run, currently fifth place in Europe. He's beaten Sparty, Avec, and Garfi while losing to Wenger. So he is looking pretty decent so far. And Cooler, in a really strange way, always explaining it, it's, it's always strange to say this about Cooler, but in Quake Champions, although he is a Quake legend, make no mistake, and very much a people's champion as well, he is rather inconsistent in Quake Champions. And I think that this stage kind of further enforces that because Sometimes he'll rock up to a weekly and he will absolutely obliterate and sometimes he'll get 3 0 by someone and it really is hard to predict when that week is actually going to happen. But when Cooler is on his game, you pretty much see exactly why he's such a Quake legend in the first place. Now, Kilson versus Cooler always promises to be a fantastic showing. It is a rivalry that is just forever ongoing at this point. Like I said, it's been a grand finals before. And uh, this time around, it's a weekly, and we'll see how it goes. I always will favor Kilson, I think, recently. He's just mm. recently doing better. That, that's all you can say about it, I suppose. But let's look at the picks and bands and see what our journey is shaping up to be, at least. So we're starting off, and Deep Embrace is gonna be the heavy going off against each other. We've got Keel being played by Kilson. Cooler will be running Sorlex, so expect a brawl to behold. Big stacks, big damage, no dots. Then map two, it will be Molten Falls. Anarchy played by Kilson, a very fast and nimble air control champion going up against Cooler, who doesn't really have to settle when it comes to mobility either, because he is playing as the crouch sliding Strock. And then finally on Awoken, First time we're actually getting to see Awoken today will be Ison versus Galena. So both of the deployable abilities, turret versus totem. Now, one of the reasons that these two players always have phenomenal showings against each other is because their styles are somewhat similar, mostly because they are scientific players. They play so heavily around the items. Cooler, one of the more famous examples of that, where he is one of the more efficient players on the planet at just completely choking you out of a map and just not letting you exist. Whereas Kilson goes in with a similar philosophy, but his combat and aim, particularly with that rail, you know, there's a reason a lot of the players in the community have called him Railson for so many years, because when he's got a rail, it feels like he just doesn't miss. You take an extremely scientific player like Kilson and then you throw out of this world aim on top and that is why you have the recipe for one of the best Quake Champions players of all time. Also can't help but notice Cooler banning the Nyx right there, which is of course one of Kilson's most famous champions. He is so powerful when he gets the Ghost Walk and Wall Jump in his arsenal. Now I think it's also worth pointing out that both of these players are hungry by now, Ketchup, because neither of them had a good showing in the previous stage finals. Both lost their two first matches and were basically evacuated from the tournament just like that. Cooler lost to Maxter and then to base and Kilson, he lost to Maxter and then to Zeniku. And that was it. These are legends who have won stage finals, champions like you called them. And they were both out in basically the first round of the tournament. So they're hungry. They want to show their worth and do much better these finals coming up. That really was such a wild finals because when we talk about those results, I mean, I obviously it's a massive upset. Statistically, there's no other way. You, you can't call it an upset. It's not possible. But at the same time, those players that defeated them, we now look at them in this stage, like Maxter, like Zeniku, and yeah. they are thriving. You know, so that was definitely an upset, but also players putting their names in the Quake Champions history book. Zeniku and Maxter definitely like two examples of that. And it just kind of creates the forever ongoing storyline of just how high level Quake Champions has become because there are still players that can go up against these Titan level players 
and they're able to get that win. And it's like, what's going on? You know, I, you see these players, you're just not used to seeing that level of success, yet here we are. First map is loading in, Deep Embrace, the Battle of the Heavies. Keel was originally seen to really kind of be an S plus tier champion who was yeah. picked in almost every single Deep Embrace match. Not as apparent these days. He still has the control and the damage and the ability to brawl in those tight corridors, but not as popular as he used to be. Cooler and Kilson, like we said, head to head. Let's jump in and we're looking at Cooler first. Immediately getting into it. Cooler has the better weapons to take this engagement. McKilson manages to slip out of the room onto the health bubbles with the LG to keep his opponent at bay. So he does stay into the fight, and only now does Heavy get secured. That was a very aggressive rush from Cooler at the beginning, completely leaving up his own item just to apply pressure with the rockets. I'm also taking a look at the predictions real quick. It seems like Chad is massively favoring Kilson 10 to 1. <laughs> but Cooler says, nope, this is my game, at least in the opening minutes. Sends Kilson off into the waters of Awoken. And he does end up having to give up the Mega, but should be able to secure Heavy. There this was, is good. There was just something really funny about a very arrogant sounding Kyogo. Here come the fireworks! <laughs> <laughs> And then down we go. Doesn't even get a chance to finish his sentence, poor guy. But Cooler, look at the armor that Cooler is currently working with. Kilson looking for as much spam as he can. And Cooler sneakily looking for a rail angle, almost has it. But Kilson a bit too far to the left, it seems. And we push forward on the health. Waiting for the armor. The question is how much damage does Kilson take in the process? Should by all means be able to take this mega? But. With Cooler, a little bit of a movement fumble, actually. I think if he didn't mess up his jump on that bridge, would probably be able to at least bully his way on the Mega. Kilson still doesn't have a railgun. He will be able to pick one up now. Cooler has done an excellent job at denying it so far, though. Has essentially just held down this rocket and railgun area of the map, sitting on top of Heavy and punishing Kilson every time he shows his face. But now the German does have a railgun to work with, and it is Cooler who now is lacking a lightning gun. That's going to make those mid-distance fights extremely difficult for him. But I don't know if Kilson is aware that Cooler is still lacking the weapon. I don't think he does because we're two minutes into a small map like Deep Embrace and Cooler still doesn't have one of the three main weapons. So I don't think that Kilson is aware of this. At the same time, you can see that Cooler has totally changed his position because he hasn't got an LG. He knows he can't take those mid-range fights, so he either has long angles with the rail or if he knows that Kilson could be nearby, he is keeping it into these extremely tight corridors. If he has an acid spit and a rocket, he can still shred the damage. But now Kilson is the one on the warpath, lands an opening rail. Needs a lot more than that though, but at the same time, trying to peek, trying to force a rail out. The rail comes, but so does the damage. Is he going to be able to keep himself even close to healthy here? Only three armor. I mean, he gets hit by a rail. That's it. Kilson gets a free frag. Misses the shot. Ooh. But Kilson can still recover. That was so close to being a disaster, no! but no! The acid! Oh, watch your tippy toes, mate! Kilson tried to make his way over to the mega hull that would have saved him there. But he just didn't have the health to survive the acid for that long. And that way, Cooler is still keeping it a two-frag game. And we're basically in the exact same position as we were earlier. No LG. Cooler, <laughs> lacking a lightning gun, right? Still doesn't have the LG. And now Kilson will be aware of that. So that is an advantage that the big player has to work with. He's just listening out for now. To get an exact timing on the heavy. Oh, no! Two rockets doing essentially no damage. One goes straight in between the floorboards. And the damage just stacks on up and Cooler takes advantage of it too. Cooler looking to get some of that bonus damage off a of Mega that he knows he can't realistically challenge. But what he can do is shut down as much health that has benefited from it. Now he's not able to get a huge amount. Kilson, the objective is to pick up weapons and continue to get what he's after. A rocket's all he's lacking. And that Tribolt spam should secure it. Oh, and he can't massively punish that heavy from being taken. Yes, Cooler has loads of armor, but he doesn't have max health just yet. But now he does. And this is a fight. The rails from Cooler, they've not been particularly perfect so far, Flea. And I think that's been keeping Cooler from being as oppressive as he otherwise should be right now. 
46% railgun accuracy for cooler versus 66 by Kilsen. Overall damage is still favoring the Russian player. That's a good push from Kilsen. Cooler was not ready for that at all. And now Kilsen is slowly starting to close the gap. I like how Cooler is approaching this. Cooler knows that if he runs out into the center of the map, he's going to get slaughtered. So instead, he just kind of tries to hide around the corner, allows Kilsen to pass on by. And now he is the one who's sitting on that center area of the map. But with Cooler being I think, one of the most methodical players that not only Quake champions, but Quake has ever seen, that is why the style fits him so well. He's content to keep the two frags, Spawn with the closest weapon, sure. And now we're just gonna sit tight. We haven't we're not obviously looking at Cooler's point of view right now, but 100 percent just listening out for where Kilson is, making as little effort to make noise. Unfortunately, not working out hundred percent now as Kilson has inevitably found him, but can Cooler escape? And let's not forget Sorlag, they're both heavies, but Sorlag is much faster than Keel. And the LG knockback essentially just gives him a little bit of a push, a helping hand in just clearing the room as quickly as humanly possible. And now Cooler manages to actually secure the heavy, gets a bit of damage with the spit as well. And he's really not looking too badly right now. Flea, he's winning the range fight and he doesn't have a rail. Like yeah. that is unheard of. But look at the tribal. Every little helps, and so does a big push into Rocket. Cooler spawning right next to Kilson. With... Oh no. Now, At least he stream <laughs> didn't see that, thankfully, but a little bit of self damage on the Rocket for Cooler. At least he can deny the small armor now. <laughs> After that, a totally intentional Rocket jump right there. Now that's a good rail from Kilson. He's just gonna push on through the asset, knows that he's got plenty of health levels to work with and recover. It just goes for the main prize. LG a little bit shaky, still coming out on top in this engagement. And there we go, the railgun will find its mark, and Kilson has now made this a one frag game with plenty of time left to work with. Mega with Cooler. Yeah, Mega is going to be the next arena for this fight to be taken. Kilson can't find the shot, doesn't connect with the damage, so he just leaves it up. He knows that he's not feeling the aim for that particular fight, so rather than keep trying and taking on damage from Cooler's consistent LG, he just gets out of the room and goes for heavy but some damage he is absolutely able to land there as a 100 rocket immediately. And he's narrowly behind. Plenty of time to make this comeback. Goes for the close range fight, is able to win it, picks up the light health bubble. Stop the acid damage over time, which is so vital on a map like this. It's not just the damage you want to shut down from the acid spit, but it's the fact that, hey, look, Sawlag can see the damage numbers anywhere you are on map. That's information. And this is looking good for Kilson. There's around 12 seconds between these two items, and that means that he might be able to just cycle them consistently and get full control of the stack that really matters. Now, Cooler is still very healthy himself, has got that massive base stack to work with. Little rail to the behind. It's going to put him in a more precarious situation now as Heavy is about to spawn Kilson. Is he once again going to rocket jump in? What will his play be? Looks like he's just going for the tribal. Does some good damage with it as well, but does have to give up the item. I like how Kilson's still sticking around. Yeah, so sneaky. Cooler was not expecting him to still be there, but Kilson just held his position and waited for Cooler to show his face again. It kind of looks a little bit like he was making lemonade when life gave him lemons. I think he meant to jump across or at least pick up something and he didn't quite get it, but he was like, hey, I mean, I'm down here. I don't think right. Cooler expected me to fall down here. These little railgun slaps are making it very difficult for Cooler. Finally gets the heavy, and then he's just taken off so quickly. These are good reads from Kilson as well. Cooler, Cooler needs armor desperately. Yeah. As Kilson sitting on a gigantic stack. And you look at that health and think that it's a lot, but Cooler gets hit by one rail and it's all gone. Cooler also just really knows that if he drops a frag now, that might as well be the end of it. There's a minute left, and if he goes down now, Kilson is guaranteed to secure full control and make it maybe impossible for him to get back and tie things up. So Cooler is now just playing a very careful game, and he does find an opportunity to pick up the mecha because the items were essentially tight on respawn time. Oh, I like that though. He knows that the mecha would have been taken. So Kilson, even without having a timer, waits a little bit to take the heavy if he can get a frag and keep the delay between the two of them even with the one we're currently working on it's enough for him to pretty much cement the victory listening out for his opponent here 
We may as well be in sudden death now. I know sudden death engages in 10 minutes, but one frag's gonna do it. So patient by both of these players. Gilson is the one to make the first move. It steals away his opponent's item and cooler cycles around. I like that rocket Picks jump just other. to make sure. Yeah. No angle for you, sir. Oh, the tri bolt just in case. Gilson, I told you, he's so on it with the reads of where Cooler is waiting. He saw the tail. He saw Cooler's tail just disappear around the corner. Knows exactly where his opponent is. Oh, risky push to go up the bounce pad. Takes a bad rail oh. as well. But he will have that to make up the fall back on. Yeah. Scary one second to not have any armor and 72 health. Cooler! Oh, he's stuck. Oh, no. He's stuck, and this is Keel's playground. Cooler is trapped. Oh, but can on. he find it? No! That was one shot either way away from being a map win. The moment he oh. dropped down and we saw that rail, I was nervous. But Kilson finds it in the last possible second. You could see the relief in his face as well. Cooler just got himself stuck in a really bad position over in that rocket corner, just behind the pillar. I think he was not expecting Gilson to be that close already, he was probably just looking for a good railgun angle to stop the approach. But then Gilson just managed to set up on that top porch on the map. And Cooler, yeah, stuck in a really bad position, caught between a rock and a hard place, made the best of it, still landed some nice railgun shots. and. Almost had it. Half a second later, a fraction of a second, and that rail probably would have connected. But it was Kilson who was first with the shotgun to secure map one. But it was hard fought, and this is shaping up to be the close game that everyone was expecting. It's just you ignore everything about how players have been performing in the weeklies and finals and whatever. When Cooler and Kilson go head to head, these are the maps that you get. And honestly, Considering Cooler was pretty much trapped, yes, you could argue that he had a lot of cover there as well, but you're against a Keel, and Keel had loads of grenades to pep around the corner. Any other champion, maybe, but Keel made that scary indeed, and he made it so close at the end. I was expecting him to just get splash damage to absolute oblivion, but so close to it not being the case. But our next map, the Battle of Movement, but it will also be the Battle of Light versus Medium. The Strog coming out for Cooler, one of his more prominent picks these days. And it'll be Kilson rocking the Anarchy. So injection, speed, a lot of that air control. But two champions known for that high octane style. So we'll see how this one goes. I believe both players are readying up. Curious to see if Kilson is just going to hang on to that injection until he really needs it or just pop it the moment he's got it available, right? You, you see both styles in the Quake Pro League. Using the injection the moment you have it ready means you can end up with up to 15 points of health over your starting position, which, when you're already a squishy champion like Anarchy, can really make quite a difference. But then holding on to it also has advantages if you want to get away from a tricky situation, get that speed boost, that extra health top up. So it's curious to see how Kilson is going to approach this. Meanwhile, Cooler has the higher base stack and is just as mobile. So. Uh, Interesting to see how that peeker is going to come into place, right? We've seen a lot of good peeker use on this map. You can throw it out, force your opponent to rail it, and then shoot it before they can recharge their shot. So a lot of clever tech that comes with the little robot. Anarchy in the Pro League, if you'll excuse the pun, is just one extreme or the other. That That's just the way he rolls. It's quite fitting to his character design, I suppose, but a lot of lights are known for needing the snowball effect the light champions they are harder to hit they're smaller um, they're a lot faster though but the absolute opposite end of that is that they are easy to frag very very easy and at this level of play hitting those shots they make it look easy but it ain't but if anarchy gets a good start and he can get control and he can keep his stack high that is where the mobility and the hard to hit nature starts to thrive if a light champion especially anarchy has a bad start and is getting completely obliterated on spawn, they just struggle all map long. So Kilson, I think really the weight is on his shoulders in this matchup. Now we didn't get to see it on stream, but Kilson wasted no time using that first injection. He popped it the moment he had it available just so he could get to railgun before his opponent. Now, unfortunately, Cooler Ooh. wasn't even there. Cooler just went for heavy and then secured mega as well, but even Despite losing out on the first two major items, Kilson actually gets frag number one. He has to be careful here. Cooler doesn't have a railgun, but he has the high ground and rockets to work with. 
Cooler doing the right thing in that fight. He only just spawned, so a rocket was the only weapon he had access to. Seeing the miss rail, I mean, he's not going to get any punish from that. The best he could do was rocket jump out. Unfortunately, going in for the Pika, trying to get some damage, and Kilson realizing he has nothing to fear, realistically. So let's just push in and get a guaranteed frag. Able to take the heavy as well. Is not going to push through the teleporter. It'd be too risky when the all-important control is just lying there to be taken. In this case, Mega will be that pickup cooler low on a lot of his stack there's just not a lot of armor around he's only one hp short from being railable there he would have had one hp and he gets away at least definitely the right choice by Kilson not to chase through the teleporter i think to a lot of people that might have looked like come on you just push and you get the frag right but on the other hand say you push and cooler is already halfway out of the other side of the room and steals away with mega or you push you take one bad rocket it bounces you up you lose not just the frag but also the next major item that's a huge risk to take just for one frag in the opening minute and a half. So instead of just taking that risk, Kilson went straight for the Mega, secured the major item, continued to rotation, and has held on to that control. So really good play, not to chase Cooler right there. That's why we're absolutely pro league level, especially with the likes of Cooler and Kilson. But as Kilson keeps this control, this kind of, like I said at the beginning, the moment you're a light that has control, that was, oh, that was past tense. Some nice LG, but an aggressive yeah. push from Kilson working wonders. And if he can manage this injection, keeping the control and the stack the way he is, you then have the speed, you have the hard to hit nature of anarchy. He's so annoying to fight when he's in control. <laughs> Cooler just kept backing up and up because he wanted to continue, you know, floating his opponent or pushing him back with LG. But in doing so, he put himself dangerously close to the ledge and ultimately plummeted to his doom. Oh, Yeah, Cooler. Doing a lot of damage. Perfect read. Excellent position as well. Figured that Kilson would come down through that bounce pad area and just shut it down real quick. And now Cooler's got the first frag on the board for this map. He's got position on heavy as well and then plenty of time to go over to Mega. So this might be the start of a comeback for the Russian player. Any amount of damage he can avoid in this place would be best case scenario. Mega's the next objective with there being a divide. Kilson gets there first now. That will be instantly lots and lots of damage. But also recovered as that's a combination of injection and Mega. I mean, you blink and Anarchy becomes healthy again. Coolers now, carefully setting up a trap. But I think Kilson realizes that something's afoot. Something is going on, and he immediately, you know, he's got that sixth sense, hasn't heard his opponent in a little bit, figures that something like that might be happening, and plays Ooh. it carefully ever then. Now, that's a lot of damage being exchanged by both players. Looks like Kilson is the one who has the better stack, especially after hitting that rail. Cooler is in no position to make a move on Heavy, can't even show his face, and has to completely disappear on the other side of the map. Now, with a bit of luck, he might be able to hear the Heavy pick up. I don't think he did from that distance, so he probably doesn't have timing on the Heavy as well. This is the many layers that we often talk about about Quake, is that that one rail that Kilson was able to land that Cooler couldn't return created what was eventually going to become this frag here now. Just putting us a little bit far. <laughs> no! I mean, he's going to die, right? We may as well frag ourselves a bit quicker just to make sure we can yeah. spawn and he's nowhere near me. Might as well. Although it is, of course, a bit depressing to go back to that zero points on the board. But indeed, with just one point of health, I don't think he even had a chance of getting another rail off. Now Kilson. We just hit the halfway point of this map. The German player has got a, a decent lead, right? So far, he's gotten good control of the map, but three frags is something that can change uh, very quickly. If Cooler gets momentum in his favor, he could lose the advantage so quickly. Kills him, that is, of course. And those are some sweet rockets. Cooler takes down Kilson. This could be the start of something. Look at how long he's leaving up heavy. He wants to get the most out of those other resources before he picks it up. Doesn't want to go to just a hundred stack, but wants to get the small armor first to bring it up even higher. 
A lot of confidence nice. in your opponent too, kind of knowing that Kilson's not just going to rush heavy. It's the logical thing that heavy would get taken almost straight away. So he knows it's, there's no reason he's going to just push his way out there. And on that note, it has taken a while to obtain these frags, right? So there's absolute possibility for Cooler to get something on the board here, especially with his current stack. In fact, he's got all of his weapons. Could do with a little bit more rockets as that was the last one. Oh no. Oh, good lord. I mean, you can kind of see why he went for that, but that was risky. That was indeed a uh, a strange decision from a risk management point of view. I don't even know if it was entirely intentional. It might just have been, you know, the speed running you rather than you being in full control of it and just the momentum of the crouch slider I mean, sending I can, you over the edge. Yeah, I can only assume that it was like... That was the last rocket that he used and he knew that. So maybe he was trying to get like a cheeky little, you know, kamikaze into the damage that it deals and then something else. But in the spur of the moment, it's always hard to predict, isn't it? But the problem is that what it has created it is taking a while for these frags to be obtained. And now we're, oof, especially off these rails, which are probably going to lead to another one. Kills and hits three in a row. That little hat trick coming out with three minutes on the clock. This went from doable to very difficult in the space of 20 seconds. Cooler does secure the Mega. Just to give up the Heavy. So he has a bit of a stack advantage. And he gets a free Railgun as well. I don't think Gilson was even expecting Cooler to have a Rail right there, but he picked up his own weapon that he dropped after dying in the previous fight. Unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to do anything with it. He missed the opening shot, Kilsen connected his, and now Cooler remains on the back foot. He needs to start kicking this into a higher gear, and quickly so as well. Because otherwise, this might be a done deal, especially if you consider just how fast Kilsen can move around the map. Strokes fast too, but if you've got to change an anarchy with the injection, that is so difficult, and the LG just isn't there. Not enough damage, little too inconsistent. Kilson, of course, has got a lot of speed, right, on the dodge with Anarchy as well, making it very difficult for those shots to connect. And that's the speed element. Again, catch up, right? You fly around the map, cooler, still gauntlet in hand, switches to LG a fraction of a second too late, but at that point, it's already over and done, and I think that by now this will be a convincing victory for Kilson on map two. Oh, Tribolt just adding insult to injury, really. That drop down rail would have been nice for the old highlight reel, but not quite. Map win obviously more important to Kilson, but continuing to... We haven't said this today, but... It's just something that's forever prominent, isn't it, Flea? That when's the last time we saw Kilson had like a bad day performance wise? Besides the finals where everyone was just bringing that 150% focus. When, even if it's map by map, there's just this level of perfection that Kilson brings to the table that is just out of this world consistent. Oh, speaking of which, say good night, cooler. I mean, what you say is entirely fair. Kilson, this stage so far, has beaten Sparty, he's beaten Avec, he's beaten Garpy. The only loss he suffered was against Wenger. So this clearly shows that Kilson, like you said, has been very consistent this stage. And even that loss against Wenger, he managed to take away one map, and it came down to a one frag difference on the final map of the series. So Kilson, if he had secured that map, he would have had a perfect run up until now. Oh, 15 seconds left on this one, but oh, Kilson just looking for how many bonus rails he can land at this stage. 10 seconds on the clock, but no need. Ooh, looking at Kilson, the amount of rails he fired, just shy of 60% rail on an active champion like Strog. I mean, he's a medium champion, sure, but he's also extremely mobile. So hitting rails on him is always going to be an impressive feat. And that was a perfect demonstration of when Anarchy gets going. He's a risky pick, but at this level of play, if you can follow through with the shots, the control, everything, uh, he becomes a real menace. And we can even see, uh, actually, the end game. He didn't prioritize Mega at all, did Kilson. He had six Megas by the end. Guess why? Because he has Heavy in hand. He can just give himself a Mega via an injection whenever he wants it. 
Absolutely, and that helped him out tremendously so as well. And that is just kind of the benefit when you get a bit of momentum going as Anarchy, right? If you are on the back foot and your opponent is the one in control, you have to use that injection defensively. You have to use it to escape bad fights, add some health to your stack when you're about to die or you just want to get that extra little boost during a fight. But it's rarely on your own terms. But that then switches entirely when you are the one in control. And that is exactly what Gilson was for most of this map, in full control, which means that he gets to decide when he uses the injection. And like you said, that gives him so much freedom to even ignore entire major items and just play a game that's much more focused on dealing damage and sticking it to his opponent than just running the course. And at the same time, you have to point out the aim. You have to point out the damage. The rail plays such a massive part yep. of Kilson's I think dominance on a lot of these maps because when someone's hitting almost every rail especially in the key moments where they really need to land it it's like what do i do if he can see me from anywhere on the map i'm taking that damage and then that rail what does it do now it means i can't take this item it means i can't make my presence known on that heavy whatever it is just completely demoralizing if anything else but that'll be the final map to come through as awoken is going to be that final map at this stage, the win for Kilsen is already here, but a 3-0, I'm sure he would appreciate. Indeed. Kilsen, like we talked about earlier, right? Neither Kilsen nor Cooler had a strong showing in the previous finals. Both lost their two first maps or series and immediately dropped out. So both of them are hungry. They want to do better in the stage 3 finals, the closure of this season of the Quake Pro League. And so Kilsen... Right, He had a few health issues in the previous stage that definitely uh, hindered him a bit going into the finals. Yeah. And I think he really just wants to make a mark again now. And you can see it, right? Yes, he's already won the series, but he wants more earnings, more points, so he can get a better seeding going into the finals because that can be incredibly important. It's really nice seeing Kilsen come back into this form as quickly as he has. Um, yeah, there's, there's no need for us to elaborate, really. But he did have... Um, quite a few health issues I think during the last stage and it kept him from being at his A game. Like I said, you know, in a similar dramas thing, health always comes first. So shouts for doing what you need to do to get yourself back on track. But at the same time, when you are in the road to recovery, being able to get back up to this form this quickly is absolutely, it's inspiring to be honest. So Quake players everywhere. Fight. Indeed it is, and that is why I think a lot of people are happy seeing Kilsen perform the way he has been. Interesting to see that the predictions are actually not as bad as they were at the start. At the beginning it was 10 to 1 in favor of Kilsen, now it's only 3 to 1, even though Cooler has lost the first two maps. Nevertheless, we're starting it off on Kilsen's point of view, he's running the Eisen. So both players have an ability that leaves an item on the map. Gilson has got the turret, capable of doing damage and also getting a lot of information, whereas Cooler has got the totem, able to heal him and also, of course, set up a trap in convenient places, such as at the top of a bounce pad or at the exit of a teleporter. Now, it did take a little bit of time to kind of disengage either way to prioritize different pickups. Kilson pushing forward now, able to get the weapons he needs, but at the same time, Cooler having that unholy trinity locked in as well. And it has just been a full minute with very little taking place. It's been gathering resources <laughs> first, and Kilson finds the rail. Importantly, unreturned, though. Because although Cooler is on heavy side, the problem is, the heavy is going to be great. But without any of the extra health, we'll see how if you can get the uh, totems on deck. Kilson finding that opening rail kind of has me a little bit worried already that he's going to be a bit of a monster with it. I love how Cooler also just rocket jumped straight out of that spot. He picked up heavy and it was like, all right, now I'm out of here. Really don't want to stick around. But this is risky, though, because now when the next rotation comes along, Kilson will be able to pick up Mega first, rush into the room, and now Cooler is definitely outstacked by a significant degree. Kilson pushing in relentlessly. And exactly that is the issue, right? When you're cooler and you just stay stationary, waiting, just burning an entire 30 seconds, waiting for the next item to respawn. Well, when your opponent's already the one with the better stack, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Feels a lot to me like the moment he threw that turret down as well, he wanted Cooler to shoot at it. He really wanted to know exactly where Cooler was at the time of taking the item, just to make sure he had as much information as he needed when he pushed in towards Heavy. And it worked in, well, wonders, I suppose, as now 
A one frag lead. Took a while to set that one up, but cooler. There are two totems in place here, but this is a tricky place to get trapped in, especially when you've just spawned. He has a rocket launcher, yeah, but if he isn't on the high ground, that's going to be even trickier for him to land that damage. Ooh, both totems. Nice shot. Still, it's only a one frag game, and Cooler has been staying into it. Hasn't given up full control to Kilson yet. At the very least, is able to consistently get the heavy, but he needs more than just that. At least he's got all the weapons to work with this time around. So one good rail, one direct rocket, that might just be the opening that Cooler needs. Tie it all up. But Kilson is not going to give it up that easily. I feel like we're kind of getting the same situation over and over again. Kilson setting up for Mega. Gets a hold of it. Cooler takes away heavy. Rocket jumps out. But that is changing this time around. Cooler not going for a rocket jump. Oh, he will go for it now. Tried to juke Kilson into paying too much attention to the teleporter exit. But now Cooler has just basically swapped places entirely. Made his way over to the Mega sites or the LG oh, site rather. But as long as Kilson is hitting these rails, it's going to make this fight so difficult for Cooler always. And piece by piece, we're getting a little bit of extra time. Looking for some more damage. Tiny bit from the rocket, but it's not going to be enough. Shut down the teleporter just in case, but Cooler having to play so defensively but the rails just continue cheeky little trick done from Kilson just to make sure he can get a little bit of extra angle maybe cooler wouldn't have been expecting it but he remains a little bit trapped for now and the rail has been the skeleton key for that control so far oh my god he hits another one flee when is this guy gonna miss Kilson is at 87 percent railgun accuracy oh he's fired eight shots and missed just one now he's missed two out of nine but if you compare that to Cooler, who's only hitting 33% rail, it's very clear how Kilson has been able to dominate this map for the time being. He isn't just charging in blindly, not putting himself at risk, because he knows that he's got the upper hand when it comes to just a railgun fight. And then he allows Cooler to make the mistakes for him, like rushing into the center area of the map where Kilson is just waiting for him. And this is the first time in the map that Kilson has been able to get both of these items. And that is going to make an already difficult situation for Cooler even harder. Because now what do you do? If Kilson can keep this accuracy up, your one saving grace to stay alive during these ranged exchanges is that you can back off and take the heavy and get away. Now you don't even have that as an option. The aggressive push, double <laughs> mid-air! Oh. Kilson is not messing around today. That was delicious. That's just styling. He could have just as easily switched to the LG to finish it off, maybe even the shotgun or the rail, but he went for the mid-air rocket once more. Now Cooler though, in the engagement that followed shortly after, actually did a nice amount of damage of his own. Stacks are pretty comparable and Cooler has two totems up, sitting right below Kilson. Oh <laughs> no! Oh, Kilson didn't notice the totems though. That could really help Cooler because now he has three of them up at the same time, giving himself a free Mega. This might be the start of something, Ketchup. Unless he if sees he... them now. Yeah, he should, he should. Only oh. one. Yeah, he saw one. There's still two up around the map. And now things are slowing down again. Cooler is just slow walking around the LG side of the map. Trying to catch Kilson by surprise, and Kilson is just sitting on that center area. An aggressive push from Kilson. The rocket. Oh, the change to the right weapon. The moment he just ran out of ammo, can still find the pickup. I mean, no, it's very strange by Cooler. Definitely yeah. a fumble. You could tell by Kilson's reaction, right? Kilson was shaking his head, not at his own gameplay but at coolers he was like why are you still oh, that's the worst fleet you know, that's the all, worst way across the map with railgun kilson does not approve yeah indeed he does not and with three minutes left to go i really don't know if cooler has any chance of making it back into this he surely won't if kilson continues to hit rails like this yeah and that rocket jump is respect yeah. through and through uh, any other player you might have been able to risk it by just running down that way oh he goes right back that could have almost been a ring out that rail if it landed. Cooler, mid-air at the time. 
But when you're having to rocket jump and you're that weak just to make sure you don't get railed in what would otherwise be a tricky shot, that is how you know your opponent is the likes of Kilson. You have no choice but to respect it. You have to approach these fights in a totally different manner. Oh, Kilson actually taking a whole lot of damage right there. Unable to get any shots to connect with the railgun and that gives Cooler an opportunity. The Russian pushes in, gets his first frag of the map. Two minutes left, four to go, it is doable, especially with those three totems up. So Cooler has got that overstack going in terms of health, he's got all the weapons he needs, he's got position for the Mega as well. This is the best opportunity I think he's still going to get to make a comeback happen. The problem is, Kilson had all the weapons that he needed fresh off spawn. Down near Banana, there was a railgun just lying in wait, so he can create these fights. And just like that, Cooler is on the back foot again. That rocket made me kind of nervous, to be honest. The one that Kilson fired, they trade their rails. Cooler will need to make this one count. We can see the totem drop down to shut down the teleporter entrance. Kilson unlikely to use it, but all Kilson has to do now is just bide his time. Make this frag take as long as possible, even if he concedes it. Kilson is eyeing <laughs> that mega. Ends up rocket jumping on top of it. Solid decision. Doesn't really gain him anything in terms of stack, but at the very least he managed to deny it from his opponent. Now Cooler gets another frag. Right in time for Heavy to spawn as well. Yeah, he's just gonna rocket jump that. Absolutely, he knows that Kilson only has a railgun to play with. I like how Cooler went for a totem first because he knew he was railable. He didn't want to peek and risk the sliver of chance he hey, still has. I mean, the chance was correct, right? Did he survive yeah. the shot? Oh, oh, but he's not going to survive that. It's two rails back to back. That may as well be the map flea because how far behind is that going to put Cooler? If he gets hit by almost anything now, he's going to go down. And if he goes down, the map is done. Misses the rail. Kilson would have survived it. But I mean, yeah. anything at this point, it would have stopped him from taking the heavy. Cooler gets a good amount of stack with those totems, but he has to push in now and he has to chain together frags at a drastic pace. That's a good direct rocket, but the turret, the turret basically prevented him from pushing through when he really needed to. And so Kilson still got away with picking up the Mega. And at this point of 15 seconds left, it just isn't possible. For once, there isn't any time left. And that means that Kilson will be able to secure a clean 3-0 victory. I think a lot of people were hoping to see Cooler make some big moves today after taking down Avec earlier this week. But it will be the German player from Team Big who secures a very convincing win. Well played, Kilson. A masterclass of Kilson, uh, just showing us exactly why he's considered one of the absolute best players in the world. He is a two-time champion here in Pro League. And at the same time, that first map was almost a bit of a red herring almost. I think that we, we expected things to be a lot closer with the first map alone and then almost like a light switch, it was not so close. That final map being a demonstration of that, but Kilson's aim was not playing any games today. The amount of unbelievable rails. Yeah, Kilson definitely disapproved yeah, yeah. with that one. <laughs> yeah, that was just um, phenomenal showing from the German. And dude, that aim is... When do you ever see the aim not on fire from this guy? Indeed, Kilson looking on point, definitely shaping up to put up one hell of a performance when we get to the stage of finals. This is a man reborn after a difficult stage two. He is looking extremely strong. This is going to be a nice injection of points for him as well. He's going to shoot up a few places in the leaderboards. I do think he will be overtaking both Base and Avec to get a third place spot. Now, of course, Base still has to play later today, so that won't remain. But still, this is looking really good from Gilson. So far, he's only lost to Wenger this stage and has disposed of quite a few strong opponents. So the man is looking good. And it's kind of like I said before this map is that uh, I'm glad to see Kilson looking this good so soon. Like I said, his road to recovery 
always continue to wish him the best. And when he's playing like that, you'd, you'd never have guessed in the first place. Um, just a fantastic showing, and I'm sure the Kilson fans out there are pleased with that result. Cooler, always a chance to see him rock up in the future weeks. Like I say, you never kind of know what Cooler you're going to get week by week. So not particularly an amazing showing today, but next time we see him could be the complete opposite effect. Up next will be Saigib versus Nosfer for our fourth series of the day. And as always, we're going to take a very quick break. See you in a few minutes.